In this video, I'll be talking about doing integrals in cylindrical coordinates. And before we go jump into the integrals, let me remind you what cylindrical coordinates are or tell you for the first time. Well, if you know what polar coordinates are, then cylindrical coordinates aren't really a big deal. The idea is we want to describe any point in three dimensions with the three numbers r, theta, and z, where r and theta are the usual r and theta from polar coordinates, namely, if we have a point x, y, z in three dimensions, then x is given by r cosine theta, and y is given by r sine theta, and the plane r represents sort of your distance from the origin, and theta represents your angle, uh, angle from the x-axis. But now in three dimensions, you have to say, well, r represents your distance from the z-axis, and theta is sort of your angle from the xz plane. Let me say what I mean by that. Well, let me give you a specific number in mind. So if I say r equals 2 and theta equals pi over 4 and z equals 1, well, the point this describes, uh, well, first we can make, we make an angle of pi over 4 with the, with the x-axis. So that puts me kind of there. Then I go out a distance of 2 on that line, and then I go up by 1. So saying r equals 2, theta equals pi over 4, and z equals 1 describes this point, which in the usual x, y, z coordinates, this would just be 2 times root 2 over 2, 2 times root 2 over 2, comma 1, because I'm just doing um, r times cosine theta, this is cosine of pi over 4, times, or comma, r sine theta, and this is sine of pi over 4. The idea with cylindrical coordinates is uh, maybe you have some region in three dimensions that that is described very well in terms of its x and y coordinates, uh, better using polar coordinates. So let me say that again. Maybe you have a region that that when you just think about its x and y coordinates, those would be better thought of using polar coordinates. Uh, but z just lies between some specific values. You might want to use cylindrical coordinates. So as an example, let me set up the triple integral over q of, of a function f of x, y, z, where q is the region above the graph z equals negative square root of x squared plus y squared inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 4 and and below the xy plane. So I'm going to set up this triple integral but first we have to maybe see what this region actually looks like. Uh, well it would help to know what the graph of this function actually is. Uh, well, if you square both sides, you get this equation z squared equals x squared plus y squared. And I hope you recognize from the section on quadric surfaces that this is a cone, and we're just taking the bottom portion of a cone. So this here is a cone. And this here, as I already said, is a cylinder because um, because the pair x, y has to be on the circle of radius 2, but z is allowed to be anything. 
So the shape we have, why? The shape we have, well, we're inside this cylinder around the z-axis of radius 2. And we're above this cone, so the cone sort of goes this way. And we're below the xy plane, so we're bounded by this circle and this cone below. So it's like we have a cylinder here, a portion of a cylinder with a piece of a cone cut out of it. So let me begin by setting up the triple integral. Uh, in this case, it's kind of easier to work work from the inside out. And what I mean by that is, for any point on the xy plane, it's easy to see what values z takes on. z goes between its value on the cone and z equals 0. So maybe I can squeeze that in here. I'll have two outer integrals, but the inner one is the range of z values. So z, as I said, is going from from this value to 0. And this depends on where you are inside this circle. But now there's the trouble of setting up what are the allowed pairs. Um, uh, x and y. And this is better addressed with polar coordinates because, because we're integrating now over a circle. So this we could think of as dA over this disk, which in polar coordinates would be r dr d theta. Let's see. So if we do everything with respect to polar coordinates, we have this inner integral going from, from the value on the cone to 0. But now we want to think of x and y now in terms of polar coordinates. So I'll have r, dr, d theta. And everything is stuck inside the cylinder of radius 2. So r is going from. 0 to 2, and, and theta is going all the way around, 0 to 2 pi. And this is nice because, well, this bound now can be written very easily in polar coordinates, because x squared plus y squared in polar coordinates is r squared, so the square root of that is just r, so this is minus r. And now the integral we have is this. Well, I'm writing f of x, y, z, but we can really think of f as a function of r, theta, and z, because x and y and r and theta are interchangeable in some sense. So for example, if you wanted to find the volume of the region I drew before, we could take f to be 1, and we would compute the following iterated integral to find volume. And you could try this out for yourself and see that you get 16 pi over 3. And I'll stop there.